Hello, I am Alicia Ashcroft. I work at the Neighbourhood Justice Centre, the NJC, located in Collingwood, Melbourne. The NJC is a community justice centre and is a unique court and community model in Australia. We operate under the Magistrates Court of Victoria and sit within the Specialist Courts Division. We have a range of support services on site, including the client services team, which is made up of over 20 practitioners, some employed directly by court services, but the majority on co-located agreements from local service providers. We work together to address the underlying causes of offending behaviour. We have specialist teams that look at justice innovation, how to improve access to justice, crime prevention, community capacity building, and specialist programs on community conflict resolution. Our court operates with a one magistrate model. And today I am lucky enough to be interviewing our magistrate, Magistrate Noreen Tui, and the NJC's general manager, Rachel Powning. Welcome to you both today. Now let's dive in. Magistrate Tui, why is the NJC in the Specialist Courts Division of Magistrates Court of Victoria? Well, the NJC is part of the Specialist Division. The division consists of Koori Court, Drug Court, the Assessment and Referral Court, which is our mental health list, and they are different operating models from our mainstream courts. One of probably the major feature of the NJC is it's only operating in the city of Yarra. I thought what I might do is just go back to the legislation that introduced the Neighbourhood Justice Centre, and that was in June of 2006, and it's the second reading speech, and this is what the Attorney General said. The Neighbourhood Justice Centre will facilitate the establishment of the first community justice centre in Australia. Victoria is now part of a growing international justice movement promoting community justice, innovation to reduce reoffending and crime rates, enhance community perceptions of safety and confidence in the justice system and improve access to justice for the community. The NJC will champion problem-solving approach to justice. It will allow the establishment of a multi-jurisdictional court at the NJC and implement a fairer Victoria, particularly for vulnerable members of the community. And of course, uh, he also talked about disadvantage and modernise the court system. The NJC will be proactive and adopt a set of measures to produce a more meaningful and effective outcome. It will address the underlying causes of offending behaviour, utilise restorative justice, therapeutic jurisprudence principles, employ a collaborative multidisciplinary case management framework with principles, with the principal magistrate dealing with all matters before the court. Now that's just a short portion of the second reading bill. So the court, in terms of its jurisdiction, has been set up so that we have a criminal jurisdiction. That criminal jurisdiction, we do all work except sex offences and committals. Family violence, personal safety, intervention orders, children's court criminal division, VOCAT, which is the victims of crime, and one month, one day a month, we have our Aboriginal hearing day for criminal matters. We also have our young adult list. And the criteria for the eligibility for coming into uh, the list, for example, in the criminal list, you live in the city of Yarra. If you're homeless, you commit an offence in the city of Yarra. If you are homeless but you live in an accommodation within the city of Yarra and you commit an offence outside the city of Yarra, and, of course, then our Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people with a close connection to the city of Yarra. So if I just give you an example of how the court applies those therapeutic principles, 
in our criminal jurisdiction, we have under the Sentencing Act deferrals of sentencing, we have adjourned undertakings, community corrections order available to magistrates in all courts. But at the NJC, we particularly focus on deferrals, adjourned undertakings and corrections orders. So the deferral of sentence, that uh, is Section 83, capital A of the Sentencing Act, and what that allows the court to do is to hear a plea, hear all the material that's put on behalf of an offender and deal with those matters in a way that's therapeutic. So the legislation gives the magistrate very wide-ranging powers in terms of gathering information. I can gather information from our neighbourhood justice officer, from corrections, from Department of Health and Human Services, from anyone, our client services team, family, friends, lawyers, anyone who wants to provide the court with information. Of course, what happens is because I'm dealing with the matters, they keep coming back to me. So I've got the ability to continue to deal with that person. I've got the power to defer sentencing for a period up to 12 months whilst that person receives services at the NJC. And that might, that's as uh, um, Alicia has already made reference to, there's a multitude of services that are available to people who come before this court. We take that problem-solving approach because, of course, ultimately we need to address the cause of the offending to work to ensure that the people aren't coming back again. We, of course, I perhaps should have said that we don't actually deal with contested matters. Those contested matters, if uh, the matter cannot resolve at this court, will then be adjourned to Melbourne Magistrates Court where it will be dealt with as a contested hearing. So I think that briefly summarises how it's been set up as a specialist court. Excellent. Thank you so much, Magistrate Tui. Um, I'm going to move over to Rachel now. How does what Magistrate Tui has said about the NJC's legislation and objectives and her referencing to the attorney's speech around community justice apply to the centre and the community that we serve? Yes, thanks, Alicia. So as Magistrate Tui said, uh, the local government area that we've been set up to serve is the city of Yarra. And that includes inner east and northern suburbs, so Richmond, Collingwood, Fitzroy, Carlton, part of Kew, and Clifton Hill, for example. So this means that all the services that you mentioned when you introduced the NJC can be accessed by not only those people coming through the court here, but anyone that lives in the city of Yarra. And we're also available to all First Nations people with a close connection to Yarra, whether they live here or not, and uh, any person experiencing homelessness in Yarra. So the, our, the Neighbourhood Justice Centre model is based on the model of community justice, as Magistrate Chui said. And this is a, a, an approach which has been adopted internationally and there are many community justice centres being developed around the world. There are a range of models uh, of community justice, but... They're all based on six key principles. And one, one key feature of community justice mentioned in the principles is putting people first. And we do this, we aim to humanise the justice system by centering the needs of the individuals and the community we serve. And we also have a strong focus on working with marginalised communities. As uh, the attorney mentioned, uh, the attorney of the day, uh, of the day in that first second reading speech that Magistrate Tui referred to. So the six principles, I'll just briefly go through those. The first of those is co-create justice. And that means we partner with the community to define and create justice for what it means in this location. We advance equity. 
So our programs are really committed to equity and combating racism in particular. We put people first, which I've already talked about. We prioritise community-based solutions. So the programs emphasise community solutions over traditional responses, such as incarceration, probation and fines. And I'll talk briefly about an example of that in a moment. We promote accountability. So we really uh, promote individual and system accountability by ensuring everyone has access to justice, that the court processes processes are transparent, procedurally just, um, and individuals are receiving sentences that are proportionate to the offence, minimise harm and promote wellbeing. And the final of the six principles is modelling innovation. So our programs serve as models by monitoring emerging issues in research. We look for new ways of working, different solutions, piloting new programs, and testing these ideas before they can be shared by the larger justice system. Another aspect in the way that the model um, is delivered in practice is that we can see clients that are coming into the centre really for as long as they need, anywhere from weeks or months. And fortunately, at present, we don't have a waiting list for services. We run a range of programs in the community around crime prevention and harm minimisation, and we have a role within the City of Yarra as a community safety hub. An example of us putting people first is the way the NJ NJC building is designed, and it really operates with the community and our clients in mind, first and foremost. So, for example, we have children's play areas in the building, we have rooms and spaces which can be used by different community groups. We have a rotating art exhibition with the art changing every six months and the artists are locals. And the artists are really uh, another way we can give a sense of ownership of the building to the community, aside from the fact that it makes it a very uh, pleasant environment for all to be in. And in fact, some of the artists have had matters before the court. Um, and of course, they find it a full circle moment to be part of the NJC from a different perspective. Now, I mentioned um, the principle of prioritising community-based solutions earlier. And in, an example of this is a program we call Peacemaking. And this is designed to help groups move on from conflict and harm. The process is lengthy and uses a practice often used in restorative justice, which is called the circles technique, to bring people together. And this circles technique is very versatile, so it can be used with large groups and sections of the community where conflict has arisen, or even in more intimate matters such as bringing families together so they can best support children involved in the justice system. Thank you so much, Rachel. Peacemaking is really an innovative um, service that we have here at the NJC. And it does lead me to my next question um, for Magistrate Tui. Can you talk in a little more detail about the services and supports that are provided to clients at the NJC? So the model is a co-located model and it means that people are employed directly by, not necessarily all employed by uh, court services. Others come in from local service providers, but it all sits under the client services team led by a manager. So they all work together as one team. And the aim, of course, is to combat those barriers that we see complex cases. We don't want people to have to continue to repeat their story to a number of people. So what we have is we have many services. We have NEMI National Health, we have CoHealth, Odyssey House, Carlton and Fitzroy Financial Counselors, No to Violence, Launch Housing, My Care, Uniting Care, Yarrow Youth Services, Elizabeth Morgan House, Karen Bush Adult Learning Centre and St Vincent's Mental Health. So the team is all about supporting the clients 
and with supporting them to not reoffend, to support victims, survivors who also come through the court and who live in the community. So they also provide uh, support for mental health issues, financial stress, fines, alcohol, drug issues, family violence, uh, support for victims, survivors, perpetrators, uh, migrant support, youth support, specialist Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander support, housing, LGBTIQ plus service support. So the whole idea is that we can provide wraparound services to our clients uh, for a whole range of needs and that with the view to breaking that cycle of offending. The other really fabulous role that we have at the NJC is the, and I've already referred to, our Neighbourhood Justice Officer who runs a wonderful program and it all goes back to what the Attorney General said, it's problem-solving approach. And so our Neighbourhood Justice Officer would take a client who might be struggling to comply with treatment component of perhaps of an order or of an undertaking and bring that person and all the other people who are around them and support them together in one room. So that might be a client, support workers, possibly a police officer who was involved in uh, the offending, might be the police informant, friends, family, neighbourhood, might be neighbours, it might be roommates, anyone who's going to be part of that person's life and can support them to ensure that they can get something out of the programs. So they all meet, they work together uh, to address what's actually going on in this person's life. They look at the barriers, why is it this person's not able to uh, attend the treatment or is falling behind, they then work out at that meeting a new outcome. Uh, the client is at the front of that process. Then ultimately what happens, our Neighbourhood Justice Officer then prepares a report working out what it is step by step that the client is going to do and work out who's going to assist them and support them and then that report is provided to me in court. So it might well be, for example, I spoke about adjourned undertakings, about deferrals and corrections orders earlier. So, for example, on a deferral of sentence, it might well be that I've adjourned a matter, I've heard that plea, I've adjourned it so the services work with the, the client, they come back on regular judicial monitorings. And essentially what those judicial monitorings are is they're an opportunity for the client to come back and tell me how they're going. Now, if they are struggling, they might well be referred to a problem-solving meeting. So that report will then come back to me so I can see how they're going and give that client an opportunity to talk about how they're going what they think is going to help. And I, of course, as the magistrate, will encourage them. I try to be very positive about it, uh, to, to praise people, because often what happens is people don't have anything positive in their life. They've never been praised. And every step, everything that they can do that's a positive, one step forward, that's what we try to encourage. And that's what the problem-solving meeting uh, is really aimed at, ensuring that that person gets that support so they can then come to court and they can demonstrate that they really are making some progress. And you can, I see it all the time where uh, people really do demonstrate that they are achieving goals. Often I ask them to prepare a list of goals and even if they can just tick off that very first goal, that's something you can see that they've really, they really feel good about themselves and that might be the first time in a long, long time that they've been able to do that. So that's realistically what happens in terms of uh, that problem solving. Excellent. And Magistrate Tui, how do referrals work at the NJC? How do people get access to these wonderful services? It's a great referral process, uh, Alicia, because the 
referrals can take place from absolutely anywhere. If I have someone who's in court and on the plea, there are issues that are raised and it's fairly plain to me that there's some issues that some referrals that need to be made, I can simply ask my clerk who will contact client services and someone will be in the courtroom within minutes. And they're a fabulous team, incredibly responsive. Lawyers also make referrals, and that, of course, is long before we actually get into court. It might well be the police would make referrals. The registry staff, so someone who hasn't seen a lawyer, has a court date, they come to the registry, the registry staff have a chat to them, can see really that it would be useful to have some referrals, you can see the need, they can make that referral. Again, it happens instantly. It's not a situation where you have to provide some with, someone with a pamphlet, for example, and they go off and go to another agency. It's there, it's then, it's immediate. And I think that's really the beauty of our referral system. The other thing that really helps, I think, is when you have a system where people can do everything on site. So they don't have to go off off site to other agencies. Uh, one of the beauties of uh, the Neighbourhood Justice Centre is it, it's a one stop shop model. And unlike a lot of other courts, someone has a referral, and if I'm just going to use an example of a young person, if you have a young person who's got some mental health issues, drug and alcohol issues, you can imagine the motivation to actually go to appointments, get themselves onto a train, go to some other place in another suburb. You're asking a lot, and often they don't do that, whereas we just don't have that as part of our referral uh, system here. We've got everybody on site able to take those referrals. We've got the workers who are involved in the community. It's a really marvellous model. Thank you so much for that, Magistrate Tui. And Rachel, can you tell us a little bit more about the other teams at the NJC? Who else makes the NJC what it is? Yeah, sure. So, um we do have a number of different teams here at the NJC. Overall, there's about 60, 60 people working uh, in the centre in, in a range of different roles. So, for example, we do have an on-site legal service team, which is made up of VLA, Victoria Legal Aid, and Fitzroy Legal Service. And this is really critical to our model that we have these two legal teams on site. Firstly, it means that anyone or everyone, I should say, with a matter before the court can have access to legal representation. And secondly, by having two legal teams, uh, we can ensure everyone has legal representation without a conflict of interest presenting itself. We've also got two police prosecutors on site. They do rotate in their roles every 12 months, which also gives us the opportunity to share how the NJC works across the wider, just, a wider justice community. And we've got a community corrections team on site. So of course, they work very closely with lawyers and the client services team. And research has told us that this corrections team at the NJC has a significantly higher completion rate for their community correction orders than other places across the state. So it's a very, uh, very successful team. And again, it's an example of how their interaction with the other teams at the NJC leads to better outcomes for clients and the court and justice. And of course, we have a registry team here who manage all of the court administration and check people in when they arrive for court. We've got an information management team who really oversee the operation of the building and act as that first contact point for people coming into the building, like a reception team. And our security team, of course, who welcome everyone with a smile, we hope, at the front desk, and roam the building throughout the day to ensure security uh, of everyone in the building. The client services team, um, of course, and Magistrate Tui went into 
detail on that team. Uh, so we've already talked about them. And we also have a programs and innovation team here. Very fortunate to have that team. And they're, they're a team which are really focused on crime prevention policy and projects. Uh, we have an individual within that team that oversees family violence partnerships across the Yarra community. And we have an education programs team. And finally, we also have a specialist who focuses on evaluating our work so we can make change and improvement as we need to. And of course, that team as a whole comes up with new ways of working, new ideas, which are then evaluated and we hope to share outside the NJC into Magistrates Court and more broadly across the justice system. And uh, there are leaders of each of those teams I've described and they make up our leadership team. And as a group, myself and Magistrate Tui and all of those leaders meet regularly to oversee the, the governance and leadership of the centre. So while many of those people are employed by all the other organisations I've talked about, like Victoria Police, VLA, Fitzroy Legal, um, Corrections, Department of Justice, we all come together as one NJC to support the clients and our community. It's a very cohesive model and we work hard to make sure that collaboration can be as best as it should be. Thank you, Rachel. And I'll just stay with you for a moment. Um, how long has the NJC been around and what are some of the changes that have happened over the years? Yeah, so we've just celebrated our 15th anniversary last year, which was very exciting. Um, and look, the way community justice centres work is they really do need to be agile. So we are constantly assessing the community needs and safety concerns, and, and we look at what happens uh, in court at the NJC and more broadly across MCV and try and respond to that. The first few years of the NJC was operated as a pilot um, and it was an innovation set up by the Department of Justice at that time. And after the four year pilot ended, we were then established as an ongoing uh, neighbourhood justice centre. So we really, as I've said, we look to the community uh, and to the needs of the court for direction on what changes we need to make, new services and new ways of working. So, for example, one digital innovation that was developed and trialled at the NJC is now available in every court across the state, and that's the Family Violence Intervention Order online application form. We've also recently completed a court support dog trial, which is currently in its policy development stage. And so we, on all of these initiatives, we work very closely with our colleagues across MCV and CSV more broadly. We think carefully about how to apply the innovations that we test here across other court spaces, because it's a really an important part of what we bring to the justice sector. In just another example of how we've been responsive, in 2019, we created a more flexible family violence waiting area for those applicants of family violence intervention orders and their support uh, people, family or otherwise, to wait for, to have their matter heard. This space is secure, there's tea and coffee facilities, uh, uh, there's calming music and videos, children toys and books, etc. Um, and so it's another example of how we're looking, always looking at ways and the needs of the community um, and how we can offer and support to improve access to justice for everyone. Excellent. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, and this is the last question, um, but I'll ask it twice. So one, and we'll go to you first, Magistrate Tui. Um, so what does the future hold for the NJC? What are some of the things to look forward to over the coming 12 months? Magistrate Tui, to you first. I think perhaps Rachel has already touched upon the response Bonding to the community needs, it's often difficult to say this is what's going to happen or this is the, the view uh, that we have of 
something because ultimately it is responding to the community. And we have that innovation team. They keep coming up. They're working in the community, seeing what is going to be of assistance, what, what's actually going to work, what's going to help the community. So they're constantly looking at projects that would involve innovation in the NJC. Rachel has also mentioned, of course, that it's trial, that innovative process or project at the NJC, roll it out to the mainstream courts. One of the matters, just by way of example, one thing that we're looking at at the moment is potentially having offenders within Yarra so those three police stations, Collingwood, Richmond and Fitzroy, potentially bailing or attaching as a condition of bail a referral to the client services team. So if you can imagine that you have someone who's arrested, they're bailed, they don't come to court for three, four months. So the window of opportunity is there from the time that they're charged through until they come to court. Now, sometimes people will have referrals in the meantime. But if we had a system of immediate referrals to the client services team, all of those people would be getting immediate access to services that they need because, sadly, what we see often is by the time they actually come to court, often because of those underlying problems, they've committed more offences whilst they're on bail. And, of course, we see in the community now the real risks where someone is continuing to commit offences on bail and we've got all the issues in terms of being in custody as a result of that. So that's just one example of uh, something that we're considering that might well be a very useful vehicle to assist the community. And of course, like everything, it means that if we can trial something at the NJC and see how that works, see if that does actually assist the clientele who are coming into the court, but bear in mind, it's also that issue of assisting the community because everyone's coming in from the community and by dealing with the drug and alcohol issues, mental health issues, housing issues, we're making the community safer and the community are having input into that. So really, in terms of looking forward, it's really, it's just, it's a, it's a moving piece. It's not something that is stable. It just changes as time goes on. Thank you so much, Magistrate Tui. And Rachel, would you like to add something about the next 12 months for the NJC? Yeah, sure. Uh, Alicia, look, I'm I'm looking forward to um, building our focus on digital services and what more we need to do in that regard to improve digital service. So what, what I mean by that, of course, is some aspects of online court, um, how we improve that experience for clients and, and for the court and making service more accessible through digital options if we can. Um, also really keen to keep building our alternative dispute resolution practice. So that's the programs like peacemaking, mediation, problem solving, et cetera. There's, I think, more we can be doing in that area. We're going to be working on developing a longer term strategy for crime prevention. So we're really clear on what the NJC role is and how we'll work with Victoria Police and City of Yarra and other agencies within Yarra. And, of course, we've got to focus on updating and building our evidence base around the effectiveness of the NJC um, to ensure that we're delivering on our commitments. And I, I do really hope that we're going to continue to see some of our innovations expanded to other courts across Victoria and perhaps beyond. Um, so thank you, Alicia. Thank you so much, Rachel, for that. And thank you both for your time today and for letting me interview you. Um, it's been really lovely to speak with both of you and to share the work of the NJC with Victoria Law Foundation. 
Thank you both again, and I'll see you soon. Thanks, Alicia. Thank you.